Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Alliance's Friday Fun Day, Stay and Play, All About Games. My name is Christine Beck. I am the Organizational Director of the Illinois Self-Advocacy Alliance, or the Alliance for short. The Alliance is proud to be an investment of the Illinois Council on Developmental Disabilities. Today's webinar is presented by Timotheus Gordon, and today is Friday, April 10th, 2020. As a reminder, all attendees are in listen-only mode. If you wish to communicate with myself or with Timotheus, please use your control panel to type in your message and send it. There will be opportunities for you to interact throughout this webinar whether it's through a poll or speaking up and speaking out and typing in your answers in the control panel. This webinar is being recorded and will be placed on the Alliance's website for viewing 24 seven. In addition, we have included five handouts for participants as they relate to this webinar. Not only do we have the PowerPoint presentation that is used in today's webinar, we have some scavenger hunt downloadables as well as a word search relating to today's presentation. So just use your control panel and download those items. So who we are, the Alliance is a network of advocates and self-advocacy groups around Illinois. And the image on the screen is 15 people, some standing and some sitting, all are holding white pieces of paper. The 15 people in this image represent the graduating class of the Alliance Ambassador Leadership Training Program, and they graduated in October of 2019. Our vision, the Alliance's vision is for self-advocates to work together to get the support we need and to live the life we want in the community. Our mission is to speak up for ourselves and each other while working together to make changes in our communities in Illinois. Our focus is on empowering people to speak up and speak out about what they want and need, what they don't want and don't need, to action plan their goals, and to participate in advocacy at the personal, agency, community, and statewide levels. And so what the Alliance does, we do a lot of different things. We support local groups, we work together on important issues, and we offer networking, advocacy, and learning opportunities through our monthly newsletters, our webinars, the Alliance Ambassador Leadership Program, and the Training Institute. And the image on the screen is a person with pink skin, short brown hair, wearing glasses, and holding papers. I mentioned that the Alliance is a network of self-advocates and self-advocacy groups all around Illinois. And the image on the screen is an outline of the shape of the state of Illinois. And on the map of Illinois, there are stars and there are words that indicate where our member groups are currently at. The Alliance currently has 37 member groups. In the northern part of the state, there are member groups in McHenry, Zion, Dixon, the city of Chicago and the surrounding areas are well represented with groups in Alsup, Aurora, Brookfield, the city of Chicago, Chicago Heights, Elgin, Evanston, Evergreen Park, Hanover Park, Homewood, Mount Prospect, Rolling Meadows, and Westmont. In the central part of the state, the Alliance has member groups in Rock Island, Pontiac, Galesburg, 
Tremont, Bloomington, Beardstown, Jacksonville, Decatur, and Monticello. The southern part of the state is represented by member groups in Alton, Mattoon, Charleston, Paris, and Edwardsville. As I am fond of saying, no matter where you live, no matter where you work, no matter where you play, chances are there is a self-advocacy group or a self-advocate near you ready to speak up and speak out about the things that are important to them. And so now I'd like you to meet our presenter, Timotheus T.J. Gordon. The image on the screen is a smiling man with brown skin and a mustache, wearing glasses and a knit cap. T.J., take it away. Thank you, Christine. Good morning, everyone. My name is Timotheus Gordon, or you can call me T.J. for short because my name sounds so Greek and complicated to some, <laughs> but I'm a autistic self-advocate in Chicago. I'm also the co-chair of Chicago and Disabled People of Color Coalition or Chicago and DPOC. DPOC. It is a group of self-advocates who are um, people of color with disabilities who encourage um, and promote not only disability pride, but also disability acceptance throughout uh, communities of color in Chicago and the surrounding areas. And we also proud to say that Chicago and Deep Park is a part of the Alliance and we are also supported by the Institute on Disability and Human Development. That's where I work as a research assistant. I am a 2017 from 2019 diversity in, in higher education fellow where I received a fellowship for completing my uh, master's degree. And they also helped me get into the work that I'm doing right now. Speaking of master, I have a master's degree of science in disability and human development. Next slide, please. So today, today's talk about this webinar is stay and play. Well, what do you mean by stay and play, you may ask? Well, as of right now, Illinois, plus more states in the United States, have what they call a stay in, stay at home or sheltered in, in place order where they encourage you to stay home to make sure that you won't catch the coronavirus or COVID 19 and spread it around. You can still go outside to for exercise or to go to the grocery store, to the bank, or whatever you have to do that is uh, important. You just cannot stay outside to um, hang around. And for some people, they like to go outside to hang out, that's what they like to do. But because of the order in place, they can't and they could feel very, very sad and depressed or not able to do some of the favorite things I like to do outside. And while for some people, staying inside is good, for other people, they will be um, bored after a few days or a um, certain amount of time. Some may even get depressed. So for today, we will be talking about um, games that you could play to 
not only keep your mind off of what's going on in the world, but also help you stay active or help you connect with friends you're not able to see and family you're not able to see. And so we'll be talking about video games, board games, car games, as well as outside games that you can even play outside with caution though, with caution, and brain games as well. Next slide, please. Before we go to the next slide, I would like to oh. launch a poll. And so for our participants who are live on this webinar, I'm gonna put up this poll. Let us know what type of games do you like to play? And you can vote for as many of these as you want. So again, what type of games do you like to play? Um, and maybe you'll discover some new ones today. So again, for those of you who are participating live on this webinar, we invite you to vote and let us know what types of games do you like to play? And we'll leave this open a little bit longer. Again, we want you to speak up and speak out. Yeah. Let us know <laughs> exactly. Let us know, what type of games do you like to play? And this voting is for our live webinar participants. So we are going to go ahead and close this poll. We are gonna share the results on the screen, but it looks like many of you enjoy video games and Half of you who participated in the poll enjoy brain games. Ooh. Yeah. And All we, right. We will talk, yes, we will talk a lot about video games and brain games you could play. All as right. well as other games that you all may be interested in too. All right. Well, let's get on with it. All right. So we will start off with our favorite video games. Who doesn't like video games? I don't know, but I love video games. In fact, I grew up around playing video games, whether it's um, Atari, Genesis, or the Dreamcast, to um, even playing games on PlayStation 4. It's a fun way to connect with friends and family is also a way to stay active while you're inside. And so we will go over a few um, video gaming systems. First, we will talk about the Nintendo Wii. And on the screen, there's a image of a um, white console that appears to stand up and next to it there's a control that you can hold with the nintendo wii you could not only use that control as a regular control that you use with two hands you could also use the control to move around as well you can even get a few exercises in too so if you play certain Wii games, you'll get a workout. And before I continue, I, I would like to let everybody know that there are so many games you could play. And you could play as many games as you want. You could play any type of game that you want. However, for Today, we will go over examples of games you can play with a family of friends that are what we call family friendly. The reason why is because there are some games that could give people nightmares or bad memories. There are games that have violence, gore, and other things that may um, trigger certain people. 
So for the purposes of the webinar, we will not discuss or mention some of the games. But as we as meant, as I said before, you can play any game that you want. So we are not stopping you from playing those games. We just want to talk about those games today. <laughs> so for the Nintendo Wii, I thought of three games you could play that are fun. And I used to play those games all the time when I had a Nintendo Wii. There's Wii Sports or Wii Sports Resort. Both of them have similar games where you could play sports games like volleyball, basketball, baseball, tennis, a uh, lots of sports you could play and you could move around while playing the um one of the two games so you can pretend to shoot a basketball if you want or pretend to swing a tennis racket and you can also get some exercise in the house too while playing we sports and we resort you can also play we fitness where you can do exercises while playing that game Similar, it's the same concept as Wii Sports and Wii Resort. You get to move around, wave your hands, exercise. Great way to exercise and stay fit while in the house. I also like to play Mario Kart. It's a racing game that has characters from the Super Mario world. And you could drive around many courses and play against the computer, or you could also play against your friends online, or even with your family and friends in person. Just don't have too many friends over though, because remember, we got to practice social distancing, meaning don't have too many people over. Only have maybe one or two if they're well enough. Other than that, have your friends play um, online instead. <laughs> the next console that we will talk about is the Nintendo Switch. And the image on the right shows an example of what the Nintendo Switch looks like. In the middle, there's a black screen that shows um, the games that you're playing. And on each side, there are um, buttons that you could press to move around and such. If you have a Nintendo Switch, you can either play it as a handheld game, or you could also connect the uh, Nintendo Switch to a TV. And you could play, you could play the Switch the same way that we would play a Nintendo Wii. And I have three popular games that you could try out. But as we talked about before, and we will talk about it again and again and again, you don't have to play any of the three games. You can play any game that you want from any system. A popular game that's out right now is Pokemon Sword and Shield. For those who are familiar with Pokemon, Pokemon was, it was fun when blue, red, and uh, yellow came out, and other versions of Pokemon. Well, Pokemon Sword and Shield is the most recent version of um, the Pokemon video games, where you could catch Pokemon, you could battle against gym leaders, you could also battle against people online if you want to. Another game is Splatoon, 
and Mario Kart 8. Mario Kart 8 is basically the Nintendo Switch version of Mario Kart, but still the same game where you get to drive around um, race courses. You could race against um, characters from Mario Kart. You even race against your um, friends. So that is all for the first set of video games. Then if we go to the next slide. Ah, I forgot there are two more. <laughs> and I think it's two of the most popular video gaming systems that's out there right now. So the first one we're going to talk about is the Xbox One. And what we see on our on my right is a um it is a black video gaming system that is rectangular that is um sit that is sitting flat on a surface and then there's also a black control with the xbox logo on top with additional buttons on top of the controller and ideas of games you could play you could play any sports game that the xbox one offers you could play madden 20 that's the popular football game that's out there or a lot of people like to play basketball so nba 2k 20 is another good sport it's game to play if you are into racing there are racing games like forza motorsport 7 the next gaming system that I'll talk about is the PlayStation 4. It's the gaming system that I really, really want to get. But keep in mind that for some video gaming systems, it may be expensive. So it's, if you're not able to afford one, you could also ask a family member or a friend if you could play games on that system too. So for the PlayStation 4, the image that appears to my right is a black gaming system similar to Xbox One, but you can stand it, you can stand it up instead of laying it on a, a table. And there's also a controller next to the video gaming system. The control for PlayStation 4 is a little smaller than Xbox One, but it, it still has about the same buttons as the Xbox One. Any, as far as uh, suggestions for PlayStation 4 games, you could play, oh, sorry about that. Somebody tried to call me. I need to turn my phone off. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but um, if you uh, if you are looking for any PlayStation Four games, then you my suggestion you could play any sports game like Madden Twenty, NBA Two, NBA Two K Twenty. You could also play Apex Legends or any racing game such as Gran Turismo Sports. Next slide, please. So, sorry about that. I have a little technical difficulty. There we go. Sorry about that. So if you have if you don't have a video game console, it is okay because you can also play games online as well. You can use your keyboard to um play the game or you can also plug in a control as well it could be a control that's a xbox control it could be a playstation 4 control or any control that works with your computer and as you can see there's a person playing an online game right now 
looking at the computer screen holding a control and that person is also wearing headphones so that they could communicate with people playing with that person. And examples of online video games are um, Fortnite is the popular one where people get to go on adventures and play against each other and characters can do certain dances. That's the popular online video game. You can also play Rocket League. Think of soccer. But instead of people playing soccer, you have cars playing soccer. So that's a fun game to play. And I don't think you would um, be bored with Rocket League, in my opinion. I like Rocket League. Or if you're not looking for a particular online game, you could go to websites where you get to play games for free. Any game that you're looking for, it could be either a video game or like a quick game, such as cards, pool, things like that. You could go to agame.com, bgames.com, Big Fish, and Arcadium. All of those um, sites that I mentioned have plenty of games you could um, play. Even um, family friendly ones like um, Uno, Phase 10. It's best that you can check out the uh, website for yourself because it's so many games that you could play. <laughs> for those who like to play uh, video games online, Sorry, you could um, also go to Steam. And Steam has a section where you could play online games for free. If you like to play cards, which we'll talk about card games in a second, you could play card games with friends at uh, playingcards.io. All right, next slide. All right, so speak up and speak out. That's what we that's what we need to do. And the first the first chance to speak up and speak out is um, responding to this question that I'm about to ask everyone. What is your favorite video game? You could um, type in your answer if you want, and we could uh, talk about all fairy video games that you like to play, all your fairy game video game system. All right. So thank you, TJ, for this first opportunity to speak up and speak out. So what is your favorite video game? Uh, Type it into the control panel. Let us know. We'll read it out loud. And remember, the one that you choose to let us know is your favorite. We would prefer that it's family friendly. We recognize that people have a wide variety of video game interests, and that's okay. But as TJ says, for the purposes of our time together today, we would prefer that you share family friendly. So again, speak up and speak out. What is your favorite video game? And so while people are chiming in, I'm just going to share that I like the old school video games. I grew up on Atari, and so I like Pong and Frogger and Pac-Man. So I'm pretty old school when it comes to my video games. All right. Does anybody want to share? Okay, here we go. Somebody wants to share. All right. So additional um, games that people like to play include NHL hockey, Atari games, Sonic, and arcade games, 
And I know that we don't have live sports going on right now because of the coronavirus, but don't let that stop you from playing sports theme video games. All right, so let's see here. Oh, we have one person who says, I'm doing cross stitch on an iPad. Interesting, Ooh. interesting. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. So for those of you who are into to craft things, um, yeah, sounds like you can find just about anything online. So thank you for that. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go ahead and move on to our next slide. All about board games. <laughs> yes, so. If you don't have access to video games, there's the good old classic board games. <laughs> and I'm also old school with uh, board games because it is a great way for um, for friends or family to um, connect with each other in case uh, people come over to check in to see how uh, how they doing and there are lots of board games out there too but just like with video games just for today we will talk about examples of board games that everyone could play and that are family friendly something that um your grandparents or your uh, parents will love for instance, you can play checkers and chess. I like playing checkers and chess. Even though with checkers and chess, it may take a long time. It's only two players and it's a game where you have to use your um, ticket a lot. But it can be fun too. There's Monopoly where the purpose of Monopoly is to have as many houses and properties and money as possible. And whoever has the most money at the end of the game wins. It could be a long game, but it could be a long fun game to uh, play with friends and family. And I grew up on Monopoly, so I recommend it. There's um, Sorry, there's trouble, there's game of life, and Candyland. My um, personal favorite too. If we will go to the next slide, please. TJ, if you would just share what the images on the screen are of. Oh, oh yes. Sorry about that. So on the so the images that we are looking at right now, they are on my right side. We are looking at examples of board games. We have on top, Connect Four. It's similar to Take That Toe, but the purpose is to have um, four um, dots in a row in um, any line or angle or whatnot. You also have Monopoly. In the image of Monopoly, you have a man, a man with a top hat and a mustache, and he's showing all the board pieces, which are, it's usually silver. And with Monopoly, of course, the purpose of the game, the agenda of the game is to get as many houses and properties as we possibly can. If you go to the uh, middle, you have a um, clue. It's a mystery game. And then to clue, there's um, the word game called um, Scrabble which we will talk about more in a few moments. And below Clue and Scrabble, there's a uh, card game called Uno. 
we will also talk about Uno when we get to card games. All right, so there's another opportunity for you all to speak up and speak out about your favorite games. And the next question that we have for you all is, what is your favorite board game? And you could, if you would like to share your favorite board game, type it in in the uh, chat section. All right. My yeah. So speak up and speak out. What is your favorite board game? And we realized that uh, the games that we are talking about might cross over several boundaries. It could be a card game that's also a brain game. It could be a board game that might be an outside game. We certainly know that online games can give you physical fitness. Um, so what's your favorite board game? Go ahead and type it in using your control panel and we'll read it out loud. So again, what is your favorite board game? So uh, thank you for speaking up and speaking out. We have Monopoly, Chess, Checkers, Risk, and Sorry. Monopoly, Chess, Checkers, Risk, and Sorry. So thank you for sharing that. And in the interest of time, we're going to keep moving along. Let's talk about card games. Oh, yes. Card games. My favorite. There are so many card games that we could talk about, but basically... Card games are any games that can be used with uh, um, playing cards or even trading cards. But we will mainly talk about card games that are playing cards or similar to playing cards that you may see in the casinos or in movies. And so the images that we see for card games are a few examples of. Um, card games. On top we have Uno and then you have a regular set of playing cards and you can play lots of games with a regular type of card games. You can play poker, gym rummy, blackjack, spade, war, Plenty of games. <laughs> and then next to the playing cards is phase 10. And as you uh, go down to the middle, I haven't played this in a long time, but has anyone played Old Maid? That used to be my uh, favorite game. And that's another game that you could play with family and friends. And if you go down below the old May cards, there's another classic game called Go Fish. And there are so many card games out there. I know, and there are other types of card games too that you could play. Some people like to play Pokemon trading cards, Magic, and um, Cards Against Humanity, but I would not get into Cards Against Humanity, even though it's my favorite game, because it's not family friendly. So I'll just mention the uh, card games that's fun for family and friends, and not just friends. All right, so here's our another chance to speak up and speak and speak out. And if you like to type it in the uh, chat section, we we want to know what is your favorite card game. All right. Again, what is your favorite card game? Yes, yes. What is your favorite card game? So go ahead and type it in using your control panel. This is Christine, and I really like gin rummy. 
I also like Uno as a card game. And my neighbors recently uh, taught me how to play a card game called golf. G-O-L-F, golf. And of course, growing up, my favorite card game was 52 Card Pickup. Yeah, 52 Card Pickup. So again, does anybody want to share? What is your favorite card game? All right, thank you. We have Uno, Spades, Go Fish, and Solitaire. Yes, thank you. And someone else has chimed in, Uno. I like Uno too. Thank you so much. And we know that it can go on it can be a quick game and it can go on for quite some time. So thank you for sharing about your favorite games. And so let's move to the next type of game, which are outside games. And as the weather is getting warmer, this might be something that you choose to participate in. Oh, we had someone else on the what is your favorite card game? Skippo. Oh, Skippo. Yeah. That's my, I like Skippo. Yeah. All these ladies want so. Yeah. Well, you know what? You may have to break out the old Skippo pack again. All right. Tell us about outside games, TJ. Sure, can see. And with outside games, the games that we will talk about today are games that you could play, but it does not involve touching or uh, grabbing people. So for instance, today we're not talking to, we will not talk about football or tag because those are games where you have to grab or tag somebody. And that will also require lots of people. And with the order, we cannot have a lot of people outside and they really encourage us to stay away from people as much as possible give people space so the outside games we're talking about are games that uh, you could play where it's not that many people around and you don't have to touch or tackle to play either there's and I'll also go talk about the um, images as well when I get, as I go through the list. You can play volleyball, whether you can play volleyball if you have a net, or you can also just play volleyball by hitting the ball around in a circle. And then if you go to the images on the right side, and if you go to the bottom right hand side, you will see the uh, croquet. If somebody teaches me how to play croquet, that'd be great. But that's a play, that's a game that you could play outside by yourself or with friends in the backyard. And it's it's similar to golf where you could use the croquet to um to hit the ball through the hoops to the right to the left side of the croquet set is a uh, washers i never played washers before so at the uh, end of the slide if somebody could explain to me what washers are that would be awesome but it is looks like a fun game a if you go above, if you go to the top above washers and um, croquet, you could play bags or cornhole. Basically, the objective of bags or cornhole is to throw bags into the hole or close to the hole as possible. And that is my, that used to be my favorite game when I went to uh, college in Minnesota. 
you could play uh, basketball outside if you have a rim outside, or if you don't have a rim, you could dribble the ball, you could pass the ball around with um, people, or you could even make a, a basketball hoop out of plywood and milk crate. That's what I used to do as a child. There's wiffle ball. It's like baseball, but instead of throwing a hard ball, you will throw like a a ball with holes in it. It's a plastic ball with holes in it, and when you throw the ball, it would do a it could do a lot of tricks. And so, have fun hitting a wiffle ball that could fly around. It's a fun game. You could play red light, green lights. Red light means you could go to the other side, but if somebody said, so if somebody said green light, you go to the other side or try to go to the other side, but if that person said red light, you must freeze. If the person moves, as I just said, red light, you out of the game. But yeah, we have more examples of outside games. So can we go to the next slide? Yes, and before we go to the next slide, I just want to remind everyone that you don't have to have washers or bags or corn, cornhole. Look around, make adaptations, maybe wad up some paper or some newspaper and and put a bowl or a bucket far away and try and get it into the bowl or bucket. Um, if you don't have a volleyball, that's okay. Can you blow up a beach ball? Do you have a balloon? Uh, there's all kinds of adaptations you can make. So now is the time to be creative. Yes, creation is fun. <laughs> and I think after this, I'll look at watchers. But if it's a time, I'm not going to figure it out. <laughs> But another example of outside games you can play, you can play Foursquare. You could play this fun game that Christine, Christine and I talked about called Census. What, the, what you could do for the Census game when you go outside to walk or even if you're on your way to the store, you count how many birds, how many dogs, how many cats, how many people, or how many cars that you see in your neighborhood. And plus, since it's census season, it is a great way to learn what the census is and learn how the census process goes so you could pretend that you're counting people or things. And then we have examples of more outside games at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Your screen. One game that is my personal favorite is hot potato. You don't have to have an actual potato, but you can use any object, especially if you have any sort of ball or even um a small bag or socks and you just pass it around and make sure that you don't drop the object. And then to the in the middle between hot potato and a paper airplane, you could play marbles. You could uh, shoot marbles on the ground or on the table. Or you could even shoot marbles on um, toy racetracks. In fact, there's a sport going on called a uh, marble racing where you could shoot marbles on um, dirt tracks or toy racetracks too. And it's fun to watch. It's even fun to uh, play too. And then on the right side of marbles you see a person's hand holding 
a white paper airplane. You could do this inside or outside, but you could have uh, friends from paper airplanes to see which one will fly the furthest. But if you don't have paper airplanes, if you have uh, remote control cars or anything that's racing, even a toy car, you could play with those items outside of inside and see which um, car or plane could um, travel the fastest. So let's speak up and speak out about our uh, about outside games. So the next question that we have for you all is what is your favorite outside game? You can type in your answers in the chat. Again, what is your favorite outside game? All right, so go ahead and use your control panel and chime in. What's your favorite outside game? And I have to tell you, TJ, Washers is very similar to Cornhole. I think it was the predecessor to Cornhole, where you had these two boxes oh. and, you, and you put them so far apart. Now, that was probably before your time at university in Wisconsin, um, but the premise is still the same. The premise is still the same. I see. Yeah. The more that we know. There you go. And a lot of these games you could do outside, but maybe you take it inside because it's too cold outside or the weather isn't um, good outside. So let's see what else folks say. Oh, volleyball. So we have someone who likes volleyball. I like volleyball too. I've never been able to hit it without hurting my wrist. So I like playing volleyball with a, uh, a beach ball. And a lot of items you can get at the dollar store or again a balloon or something soft that you can that you can do so here's some other ideas basketball marbles throw the football or just toss a ball around you know it it works your muscles it works your hand eye coordination make sure it's not a heavy ball um bocce ball I know that we have some Special Olympic athletes out there who participate in bocce. So again, lots of different ideas that you can do outside and you know what? You can make up your own. Let's move on yes. to, <laughs> to other games. So brain games. Oh, now here's the fun part with brain games. For um, time, I'm not going to get into brain games deeply, but it's basically any type of games that involves lots of thinking, whether it, you have to put words together, find words, put puzzles together, or add them together. It helps you, um, it helps you exercise your brain, so to speak. And so they, I will mention examples on uh, on the um, with the images first. So you have a square with lots of numbers. That puzzle is called Sudoku. I don't know how to play it exactly, but it's basically where you try to add all the numbers together in a um, square, but you got to make sure that whatever you add is based on the number that's already in the square. Good luck. <laughs> There's also jigsaw puzzles, and you see an example of one is multicolored jigsaw puzzle. You could um, do crossword puzzles. An example of it is 
next to the jigsaw puzzle. You could play a word game like Scrabble, where you could put words together on a um, playing surface. Other game, brain games that you could um, play is Word Search, Name That Tune, Memory, and my favorite one, Apples to Apples, where you try to put cards in a certain category. It's like the family friendly version of Cards Against Humanity. Ta-da! In fact, you can make your own word search puzzles. You can, you can make your own, or you can also use word search puzzles that other people made. And we have the website posted for you all. It's almondpenguin.com slash word search. And Christine created a um, example of a word search puzzle where you have to uh, find the words that um, we provided. And we provided words based on this webinar. So if you want that same um, word search puzzle, let Chrissy know, or if you want to make your own, just go to the website. It's Okay, sorry. So let's speak up and speak out again. But this time, we'll ask this question. What is your favorite brain game? Type in your um, answers in the chat section. Again, what is your favorite brain game? All right. This will be your last opportunity to speak up and speak out this way. What is your favorite brain game? And I like apples to apples. I don't play it very often. I like Scrabble. And there's um, versions of Scrabble. Uh, there's Boggle, B-O-G-G-L-E. There's also Bananagrams, uh, which is a, a word type of brain game where you make different words. Um, crossword puzzles. Those are great brain games. Um, I know that Yahtzee, uh, it involves dice, but uh, you have to use your brain because you have to count things. Um, so, Yahtzee! <laughs> Yahtzee! Uh, do you have a favorite brain game? All right. And so if you want to type that in using your control panel, go ahead when we receive it uh, and there's a break, we'll go ahead and read that out loud. But we're going to continue moving along in the interest of time. And we have more games that are outside of the uh, um, categories that we mentioned, but they are still games that you could play. Christine already mentioned Yahtzee. It involves rolling dice and counting. And I'll read off what I see from the images. So we talked about Connect Four already. There's what's next to Connect Four are Dominoes, one of my favorite games to play with friends. Or some people call it bones, but for today we call it dominoes. There's spot it that are, that is below dominoes and cadet four. And does anybody remember operation? If so, it is not only a fun game to play, but also a great way to learn about body parts or how doctors um, do operations for fun. Well, it's a fun way to learn. So I think that's all that I have for other games. Oh, no, I don't. I forgot to mention 
one more thing. Another way to have fun with family and friends or even by yourself, scavenger hunts. Now you can do scavenger hunts either inside or you can go outside for scavenger hunts. And for instance, if you do one at home, you can create a list of things that you want somebody to look for, like a certain book or a certain food item. Or if you want to have a scavenger hunt outside, you can create a list where people will have to find certain things in the neighborhood, like a certain store or a park or grocery store or other places. But remember, especially people in Chicago, do not go to the lakefront or you'll get in trouble. But that's not the point. <laughs> and we have images of examples of uh, scavenger hunts you can do. You do one based on nature, or you could do something that's based on indoors, or you could do a scavenger hunt based on your five senses. And yeah. in the previous slide, you could go to any other websites to find more examples of scavenger hunt ideas. Yes, and this is Christine, and I just want to remind everyone that in their control panel, there are downloadable handouts. So in addition to the uh, word search that relates to today's webinar, you can download and print that out. But we have also included downloadable Five Senses Nature Scavenger Hunt the backyard scavenger hunt and the indoor scavenger hunt, or again, you can make your own. Yes. And so to um, end, to end my version of the stay and play uh, webinar, we would like to talk about the stay and play social media campaign that is um that we starting so if you have any pictures or videos or even live streams of you um playing your favorite games you can either post your pictures and videos on the Illinois Self Advocacy Alliance Facebook page or you can also email those pictures and videos to info, I-N-F-O, at self-advocacyalliance.org. Or if you don't want to post it on the Illinois Self-Advocacy Alliance Facebook page or, or email those uh, pictures to the uh, Alliance, it's okay. You can also share any live streams that you want as well. You can share live streams from your YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Twitch, or any website where you can record yourself playing games. You could post your live streams. You could post pictures of you and your friends playing video games or you can post not just video games sorry but games in general or you can post videos of yourself or you and your friends playing games on any social media pages as well so if you like to share things on your facebook or twitter or instagram you can do so as well well we what we ask of you all, or what we encouraging, encouraging you all to do, is make sure that you use the two hashtags when you post things on your own social media page or the Alliance's Facebook page. 
use hashtag stay and play and also hashtag IL Health Advocacy Alliance on any post that you make. The reason why that we encourage you all to use those hashtags is because those hashtags allow us other people to see what you're playing as well and they could share it. Make sure that whatever you post is family friendly. So any post that could make your parents or your grandparents or your family members proud, that is what you post. Not anything that could um, make your family mad or sad. All right, so if you have any questions on games to play at home or outside, you could um, email me at T G O R B S and David O seven at UIC.edu or Chicagoland Chicagoland Deepak at gmail.com. I will answer the both emails if you have any more questions on games. Another treat that I have for you all, you can go to the Timotheus TJ Gordon Jr. Facebook page. And on Friday nights, you can watch me play games. As a matter of fact, tonight, I will post a video of myself playing NHL 94 or Sonic, I don't know which one gets, but you will, you all will get to see me play a um, video game on my computer. So just follow my Facebook page and you will see examples of me playing video games or other games at home. Well, I would like to thank TJ for sharing all about games today and you have his contact information and if you want to uh, check him out on his Facebook page on Friday nights and see him uh, playing go ahead and do that if you would like to connect with the Alliance our email is info at selfadvocacyalliance.org our website is selfadvocacyalliance.org. And if you are a Facebook user, find us and like us by just searching for Illinois Self Advocacy Alliance. The image on the screen is a person with pink skin, short brown hair, raising the right hand in a fist. The person is wearing a purple shirt with the words, ask me about the Alliance written in white. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope that you enjoy Stay in Play, all about games. Please, everyone, stay safe and be well. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone.